in the heart of winter, when the world is draped in a thick blanket of snow and ice. What's the first thing you think of for staying warm? A roaring fireplace, right? The comforting crackle of wood, the dancing flames, the cozy heat spreading through your home. For centuries, this has been the go-to solution for surviving the cold. But what if I told you there is a man who built a cabin that stays a comfortable 60 degrees Fahrenheit all winter long without burning a single log of firewood? Sounds impossible, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly what his neighbors thought. They laughed at his strange, unconventional design, calling it a stupid idea that would never work. But this man, an inventor with a vision, was about to prove them all wrong. Stick around, because this is the incredible story of a cabin that defied all expectations and could change the way we think about heating our homes forever. This story takes us back to the early 1970s, a time of rising energy costs and a growing awareness of our planet's limited resources. An inventor named Mike Oler, living in the rugged wilderness of northern Idaho, was determined to find a better way to live. He wanted a home that was affordable, sustainable, and most importantly, warm through the brutal Idaho winters, where temperatures could plummet far below freezing. His neighbors relied on traditional log cabins, constantly chopping and hauling wood to feed their hungry stoves. But Mike saw this as a cycle of endless labor and expense. He believed there had to be a smarter way, a way that worked with nature instead of fighting against it. His idea was radical, and to many it was just plain weird. He decided to build his home underground. Now, when you hear underground house, you might picture a dark, damp, cramped hobbit hole. That's what his critics imagined, too. They mocked his plans, picturing him living in a miserable, musty cave. But Mike's design was anything but a simple hole in the ground. He called it the underground greenhouse, a concept so brilliant in its simplicity that it is a wonder more people haven't adopted it. He wasn't just digging a pit. He was strategically using the earth itself as a massive natural insulator. So, how did he do it? The core of his design was something he called the PSP model. Post, shoring, and polyethylene. Instead of building walls from scratch, he used the earth as his primary structure. He started by excavating a space into a south-facing hillside. This southern exposure was absolutely critical. Why? because it allowed him to maximize the amount of sunlight his home would receive, especially during the low-angled sun of the winter months. Think of it like a natural solar panel. He then erected a sturdy framework of posts to support the roof. For the walls, he didn't use concrete or bricks. He used the excavated earth itself, held back by a simple shoring system and lined with a thick, durable sheet of polyethylene plastic to act as a waterproof barrier. The real genius, however, was the front of the cabin. Instead of a solid wall, he built a huge, sloping wall of glass panels, creating a passive solar greenhouse. This wasn't just a window, it was the engine of his entire heating system. Throughout the day, sunlight would stream through the glass, warming up the air inside. But more importantly, it would heat up the thermal mass of the house, the floor and the earth walls themselves. This is a key principle of passive solar design. Materials like dirt and rock are excellent at absorbing and storing heat. During the day, they act like a battery, soaking up the sun's energy. Then, as night falls and the temperatures outside drop, this stored heat is slowly released back into the living space, keeping the interior at a stable, comfortable temperature. It's a slow, gentle, and completely silent process. No noisy furnaces, no blowing vents, and absolutely no need to get up in the middle of the night to add another log to the fire. The earth surrounding the other three sides of the cabin acts as a perfect insulator. Just a few feet below the surface, the ground temperature remains remarkably constant year-round, typically around 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So, while his neighbor's cabins were battling sub-zero winds, Mike's home was being hugged by the steady, mild temperature of the earth. The results were astonishing. Even on the coldest, cloudiest days of winter, the inside of Mike's underground home never dropped below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. All thanks to the sun and the earth. His neighbors, who had once laughed at his stupid design, were now shivering in their own homes, spending a small fortune on firewood and electricity. They watched in disbelief as Mike lived comfortably with zero heating costs. 
He had created a self-regulating ecosystem. The greenhouse section wasn't just for heat. He also used it to grow fresh vegetables all year round, even when snow was piled high outside. His home provided not only shelter and warmth, but also food. But what about the common problems associated with underground structures like dampness and lack of light? Mike had solutions for those too. His clever design incorporated a ventilation system that allowed for constant air circulation, preventing any buildup of moisture or stale air. And far from being a dark cave, his home was flooded with natural light from the massive wall of south-facing glass. In fact, it was often brighter and more pleasant than the conventional cabins with their small, punched-out windows. He proved that living underground didn't have to mean living in the dark. Mike Ola didn't just build a house for himself. He started a movement. He wrote a book called The Fifty Dollars and Up Underground House Book, sharing his methods with the world. He wanted to empower people to build their own affordable, eco-friendly homes. He showed that you don't need a massive budget or a team of contractors to create a comfortable and sustainable living space. All you need is a little ingenuity, a willingness to think outside the box, and a deep respect for the power of nature. His story is a powerful reminder that sometimes the most brilliant solutions are the ones that seem the craziest at first. The very people who laughed at him were the ones who ended up asking for his advice. Today, as we face new challenges with climate change and energy independence, Mike Ola's stupid cabin design seems more intelligent than ever. It's a testament to the power of passive design, proving that we can live in harmony with our environment. We can create homes that are not only comfortable and cheap to run, but also gentle on the planet. The next time you see an unconventional idea, maybe don't be so quick to laugh. It might just be the solution we've all been waiting for. Mike's legacy isn't just a house buried in a hillside in Idaho. It's a powerful idea that continues to inspire builders, dreamers, and innovators around the world. Thanks so much for watching. What do you think of this underground house concept? Could you see yourself living in one? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story of incredible innovation, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more amazing stories. We'll see you in the next video.